What's up, Odooers, and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to configure salaries in Odoo. All businesses need to pay their employees, but how is that pay calculated? Salary rules can seem complex at first, but Odoo simplifies the process with user-friendly salary configurations. In Odoo, a person's salary is based on a main structure type, which calculates their pay based on the various structures associated with it. Each structure consists of various salary rules that, combined with other input types, is how pay is calculated. You can think of it as a nesting doll. In the biggest doll is the structure type, which contains different salary structures inside of it, which have various rules nested within the structure. Does that analogy help? Helps me out. Also, I just wanted to mention that my database is configured for the United States, since that's where I'm located. And in this tutorial, I'll be configuring a general salary, not a United States specific salary, so that'll keep it relatable for everybody. As always, check with your accountants to make sure that you're following all your location specific payroll laws and requirements. And with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. Today, we need to create a new salary structure for interns. Stealthy Wood is starting to take on interns to teach them the fine art of furniture making. We have several internships focusing on different aspects of the furniture making process from woodworking, upholstery, welding, and even furniture design. These interns will work part-time and they'll also be paid on a weekly basis. None of our current structures support this specific situation, so we're going to create it from the ground up. So without further ado, let's hop into our database and see how payroll configuration works. Here I am on my main payroll dashboard, and today we're going to focus on the configuration menu, but specifically these items under the salary section. First, let's take a look at the highest level, which is structure types. And currently, when we click into structure types, we can see we have three salary structures. First, we have employee, followed by worker and United States employee. Both employee and worker come pre-configured in the payroll app as they are generic salary structures with basic configurations. The main difference between the first two is the default wage type. The first one here, employee and fixed wage, is structured for salaried employees with a fixed wage and is calculated on the regular pay structure. Following that, the worker structure is for hourly employees and is calculated based off of a hourly wage and is also using the worker pay structure. The United States employee structure type was pre-configured by Odoo when I selected the United States localization, so be sure to read the documentation about localizations, which I'll link down below. The United States structure type specifies a country in the country column, unlike the generic structure types, which don't. It's similar to the employee structure type in that it's also a fixed wage or salary wage, but the structure is specific to the United States. All right, I'll create a new structure type for our new intern by clicking new in the upper left hand corner. And for the structure type name, we're just going to name this intern. Next, I'll clear the country field here. So it is for all of our offices, including our Mexico and Canada offices. If I were to leave it as United States, then I could only use it for my United States offices, which I don't want. Next, I'm going to set the default wage type to hourly. And that's because they will be compensated based off of their worked hours. Since each internship will have a different length of time based off of each intern's school schedule, I'm going to change this default scheduled pay to weekly. I don't want them to wait a whole month to be paid, and some internships might not even be that long. Next, I'm going to change the default working hours, and we're going to change it to apprentice 20 hours a week, since they're not full-time employees. And hmm, I can't change this regular pay structure. I wonder what that's about. Something tells me we'll find out soon. Okay, moving on, and we have the default work entry type. This is correct. We're going to leave it as attendance. That means that when an intern logs their hours, it will be logged as in attendance as opposed to overtime hours or sick time off, for example. Okay, now that we have our structure type more or less created, it's time to configure our structures for this new structure type. So we're gonna click back into configuration, but this time we're gonna click on structures. 
So these are all the salary structures that we currently have configured. And we could see from the search box that each structure salary is grouped by the structure type. And that's where we previously were. So I'm gonna expand all of these so we can see which structures are nested inside of which structure types. And we can see that employee has two salary structures, which is regular pay and 13th month under the year bonus. On the other hand, our worker pay as well as United States employee only have one structure each, and each of these salary structures are configured with salary rules. We can also see the number of rules for each salary structure in the salary rules column. And there's also a country column. And if you remember from before, if no country is specified, the salary structure is universal. If a country is specified, like United States, then that can only be used for the United States. Okay, let's create our structure for our new structure type by clicking new in the upper left-hand corner. And for the structure name, we're just gonna name this intern pay. And then for this type directly under, we're gonna select intern. I'll leave the use workday lines under checked, which means the actual working days will be listed on the pay slip. I'm going to clear the country field because I want this to apply to all of our offices, not just the United States. And I won't tick the year to date computation because our interns typically have a short term engagement. So year to date computations are not needed. I'll leave the template here set to pay slip. And in the pay slip name directly under, I'm just going to put intern pay slip. I don't want to hide the basic wage on the pay slip, so I'm not going to tick this right here. And on the default scheduled pay, this is not able to be edited because it's what we set as the type when we selected intern. And last but not least, according to the accountants, is the salary journal which we're gonna to leave to the default salaries. Next, we can look at the specific rules for this salary structure, which are all housed in the salary rules tab directly below. These auto populate with basic salary rules. However, let's see where else these can be stored. I'll click on configuration and then rules. These rules are grouped by salary structure as we can confirm here in the salary structure filter in the search box. We can also see there's a default structure rule set with eight default rules. And these were automatically added to our new intern pay salary structure as well. I need to add a new rule salary because we're gonna give our interns a $40 a week lunch stipend. And to add that, all we have to do is click new in the upper left-hand corner. And in the rule name, I'm just gonna put lunch stipend. And for the category field, I'm just going to set this to allowance. And this is because the stipend is an additional amount provided for a specific purpose. Next, I'm gonna create a code which will be used when processing payroll. So I'm just gonna put for the code STPD. Don't worry, I already checked with our accounting team and they're okay with this code and all this other information too. So now the sequence is used to determine when in the payroll process, this rule is calculated. I'll leave this as is. Next, I'll set the salary structure to intern pay. And by default, this rule is active and appears on pay slip, which are both correct. I do want this to appear on both my cost dashboard and in the payroll reporting. So I'll tick both of these checkbox here for view on employer cost dashboard, as well as view on payroll reporting. Okay, there are a couple things in the general tab that we still need to configure. So if we scroll down in the conditions section right here, this selection always true means that this rule is always in place. So all interns will receive this money every week. Under in the computation tab, I'm gonna leave this amount type to fixed amount since this is the set amount we're giving our interns. The quantity is gonna remain as one because they're receiving one lunch benefit a week. And for the fixed amount, we're gonna change this to 40 since we're giving them $40.
And then I'm going to leave this partner field here blank because Stealthy Wood is paying for their $40 lunch benefit and we aren't being reimbursed by anybody. If, for example, we are receiving some type of funding from a third party towards this benefit, we would place that partner here. You hear that hot dog gourmet? Could be some great advertising if you want to partner up. All right, and that does it for creating this new rule. To view our new rule, we can navigate back to the salary rules dashboard using the breadcrumbs right here. And look at that, here it is, our lunch stipend. And that's it for this tutorial. We learned how to create a new structure type, configure a structure within it, and create a new rule for the structure. That's awesome. I can't wait to tell our interns about their free lunch. So I'll see you in the next video. Keep it up, Bodoers.